All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Mm. Chinese devotees are there, yeah? Yes, Imaj. We got now 30, 30 devotees. On the China? Uh, all together. All together, huh? <laughs> Sometimes one devotee told me they couldn't get in because there was a hundred devotees. Yes, yes. It's limited. Only for a hundred participants. Mm -hmm. And do we have that many sometimes? Sometimes a hundred people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have hundred full. Sometimes eighty, ninety, yes. Maybe we should get bigger so we can have more people. Mm. I said Padma Lotion Roji one time he got for five hundred people. <laughs> really? For for uh, we as a puja day, but I think just for one month he got that. Oh, okay. But... Anyway, I think a hundred is enough. Probably we don't get a hundred so often. Yeah, yeah. Not every day we have hundred. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll begin. <coughs> Recording in progress. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakalpa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevaca Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So we're reading the Nectar of Devotion and we're on chapter number four describing how devotional service surpasses liberation. So Rupa Goswami had given many different references from scriptures, especially Srimad Bhagavatam, to support the fact that devotional service is much greater than liberation. Alright, so here Srila Prabhupada is commenting, we're reading here. We're almost at the end of the chapter. There's a one, two, three, four paragraphs still remaining in this chapter. So Srila Prabhupada explains, from all the, those different statements, the different references from the scriptures, it's found that a devotee is not after any of the stages of liberation. So there are five different kinds of liberation, which we already explained before. One is to become one with the Lord. Number two is to live on the same planet as the Lord. Three is to obtain the same bodily features as the Lord. And four is to have the same opulences as the Lord. And the fifth one is to have the constant association with the Lord. So from these five different kinds of liberation, one 
One is known as Sayujya, which means to merge into the existence of the Lord. So this, so this kind of liberation is not really acceptable to a devotee. The, the other four kinds of liberation, the devotee doesn't desire them, but they're not against the devotional, they're not against bhakti yoga. In other words, if Krishna gives that kind of liberation, the devotee may accept it. But the devotee doesn't want that liberation. All the devotee wants is devotional service, birth after birth. So sometimes people, they, they get one of these four kinds of liberation. Krishna may give them one of these four different kinds. Out of the five, they said four are acceptable. So a devotee may achieve one of these four kinds of liberation. So that devotee, he may also develop affection, in other words, he develops atta attachment for Krishna. And he may be promoted to Goloka Vrindavan in the spiritual sky. So the devotees who are who get sent to the Vaikuntha planets, they get one of these four kinds of liberation. But from the Vaikuntha planet, they may become attached to, to go to Krishna Loka, and Krishna may sometimes send them there from Vaikuntha, they may go into Krishna Loka. So those those who are in the four liberated states, they you know, they may be going through different stages. They're, you know, if they get one of the four kinds of liberation, then they're still going through different stages. They're, they're not fixed. They're not definitely fixed in one level yet. In the beginning, they want the opulences of Krishna. But gradually they become more, they become mature and, and then they, instead of wanting the opulences of Krishna, they want the love of Krishna and Vrindavan. No, the love in, of Krishna and Vrindavan with his devotees is the highest kind of love. So when they hear, when the devotees hear about 
Vrindavan, then they become attracted and they give up all the opulence of Vaikuntha to go to Vrindavan. So the pure devotees never accept this Sayuja liberation, they never accept that liberation of becoming one with the Supreme. But sometimes they may accept the other four kinds of liberation. So then Prabhupada explains, there are many different kinds of devotees of Krishna. And the one who is attracted to the original form of Krishna in Vrindavan is considered to be the first class devotee. So that devotee is never attracted by the opulences of Vaikuntha. And he's not even attracted to Dwarka, which is the city where Krishna was ruling. He's, he thinks only Krishna and Vrindavan is the best. So Rupa Goswami says, Rupa Goswami, he's a head of the leader of the Goswamis in Vrindavan, and he says that the devotees who are attracted by the pastimes of Krishna in Gokula or Vrindavan are the best devotees. If a devotee is attached to a particular form of Krishna, he doesn't want to change his devotion to other forms. So Prabhupada gives an example about Hanuman, who is a great devotee of Lord Ramachandra. So Hanuman knows that there's no difference between Lord Ramachandra and Lord Narayan. But Hanuman only his only desire is to give service to Lord Ramachandra. He, know, he knows there's no difference with Lord Narayan, but still he's attracted to Lord Ramachandra more than he's attracted to Lord Narayan. So for different devotees, it will be different. Some devotees will be attracted to Lord Rama and some devotees are attracted to Narayan. So it depends on the devotees, different for each devotee. And there are many different forms of the Supreme Lord, but Krishna is the original form. And all of the devotees of the different forms of Krishna are in the same category. 
แล้วก็สาวกคนอื่นๆที่ชอบกริชนาในรูปของกริชนาเนี่ยอันนั้นเป็นสาวระดับเดียวกัน But still, the devotees of Lord Krishna are the top in the list of all the devotees. Krishna is the supreme. Krishna is supreme over Vishnu, over Narayan. Krishna is the supreme. Okay, so we've finished that chapter. We're going to go on now to chapter five, the purity of devotional service. So. Chapter begins. All of the previous instructions given by Rupa Goswami can be summarized. So as as long as somebody is still attracted to material things. Or somebody may be desiring to merge into the spiritual effulgence, then you cannot enter into pure devotional service. So. Rupa Goswami says that devotional service is transcendental to all material conditions. And it, it is not limited to any particular country or class or society. So, in other words, devotional service is for everyone in any place at any time. So, in Srimad Bhagavatam, it says, devotional service is transcendental. And has no cause. And devotee will do devotional service without any desire for material gain. And devotional service cannot be stopped. By any kind of material conditions. It is open for everyone without any distinction. And it's the occupation of all living entities. It's the actual. Proper occupation of all living entities. In the middle, so uh, Prabhupada is writing more to tell, help us to understand the background about devotional service. And he says, in the Middle Ages, Middle Ages means like five hundred years ago, or. He says, in the Middle Ages, after the disappearance of Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya's great associate, Lord Nityananda, a class of priestly persons claimed to be the descendants of Lord Nityananda, and they called themselves the Goswami caste. <laughs> เ
ในยุคกลางหลังจากองค์นิตแตนันดะเนี่ยผู้ใกล้จิตที่ยิ่งใหญ่ของพระองค์เจ้าเจตัญญาทรงไปมีกลุ่มนักบวชอ้างว่าตนเองสืบทอดลงมาจากนิตแตนันดะเรียกตนเองว่าเป็นวันนะโกสวามี So Lord Chaitanya left the world in 1534, and Lord Nityananda, he was here for some more years, about maybe 10 or 20 more years. So after Lord Nityananda left the world, then. There was competition between people about who should actually be the the head, the, the real acharyas of the sampradaya. So Prabhupada said, there were some people they claimed to be the descendants of Lord Nityananda. Well, Lord Nityananda did marry. He had actually two wives, and he had he had two children. There was one son, and there was one daughter. So the son usually is the one who becomes the successor to the father, but the the son of Lord Nityananda, he never married, so there was no children from after the son of Lord Nityananda. Although there was a son, but the son of Lord Nityananda didn't marry, so there was no children after him. So they claimed that the that they were the ones who had the responsibility. They they said it was their position to spread Krishna consciousness to everyone. They claimed they were the only ones who had the right to distribute Krishna consciousness. So they called themselves the Nityananda Vamsha. In other words, they claimed that they were the direct descendants of Lord Nityananda. And so they claimed this right just simply by their birth and just simply by their association. They never actually did anything to prove it. But because they had some connection to Lord Nityananda by birth or some by initiation, so people respected them. So in this way they became powerful for some time. But when Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur appeared, then he smashed them, he defeated all their teaching. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he was the son, seminal son 
of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So he was brought up in studying Gaudiya Vaishnavism and he knew everything about Gaudiya Vaishnavism. So Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati completely defeated their ideas. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati so for some time there was some struggle and there was arguing going on and quarreling and they were saying, no, we're the ones because we're the descendants of Lord Nityananda. But actually Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati proved to them that it's not simply by birth that you become the successor of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. <laughs> Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati showed to them, showed to the people, that devotional service is not meant just for those people, but it's for everyone. Everyone has the opportunity to do service for Krishna. And anyone who is engaged in devotional service is already as good as a Brahmana. So this was mainly due to the work, due to the preaching of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur. He, he fought, he struggled to establish that anybody could become a Brahmana if they're properly trained and initiated by a bona fide spiritual teacher. So by the mercy of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, that now the Krishna consciousness movement is going on. So it's on, on the basis of this philosophy that anyone can become a Gaudiya Vaishnava from any part of the world or any part of the universe. And if someone's a pure Vaishnava, if they're pure, then their activities and their actions and the speaking, then, then uh, is situated, they must be transcendentally situated. <laughs> So the biggest qualification in the material world is to be in the mode of goodness. So somebody who is Krishna conscious, they can get, they can actually achieve that position. They're actually they're a one who is a devotee in Krishna consciousness, then they must be in the mode of goodness. So 
So Krishna consciousness is based on these teachings of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada. And Srila Prabhupada, our own Srila Prabhupada, he says, he says that based on his authority, on the authority of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he said that's why we are claiming people from all over the world to be devotees. And Prabhupada said, especially in the Western countries, we're going to all the countries in the Western Hemisphere, and we're and their people are joining and becoming devotees. So the, these people, some people, they claim to be brahmanas. They, they, some people, they claim to be brahmanas just simply by birth. And they claim unless you're born in a brahmana family, you cannot get the sacred thread. You cannot become a brahmana. And if you cannot become a brahmana, you cannot also become a, a Vaishnava. But Prabhupada said, we do not accept this theory. It is not supported by Rupa Goswami or by the strength of any of the scriptures. And Rupa Goswami mentions, he says that every man has the birthright to accept devotional service and to become Krishna conscious. So Rupa Goswami gave many evidences from the scriptures and he's quoted especially one passage from the Padma Purana. Uh, so, the, this, in the Padma Purana, it's mentioned there that the sage Vashishta is telling Maharaj Dilipa, and he's saying to him, My dear king, everyone has the right to do devotional service. And everyone has the right to accept devotional to become a Krishna conscious Vaishnava. And he gives an example to support it. He said, just, just like everyone has the right to take a bath early in the morning in the month of Mark. Month of Mark means December to January because that's a very cold time of the year. But everyone has a right to take bath at that time. If they want to, they can do it. So it's a nice example because we know not everybody wants to take bath in the month of January, in the month of, in the very cold time in the year and to go into the river and to bathe in the cold water. Not everybody wants to do that. 
เดี๋ยวจะอยากจะไปอาบน้ำในแม่น้ำในเดือนที่แสนจันหนาวแบบนี้ But if you want to do it nobody's gonna stop you you can do it เดี๋ยวถ้าเกิดเราจะทำเนี่ยก็ไม่มีใครจะห้ามเราสามารถทำได้ So devotional services like that people often they don't like us doing it but we have a right we, nobody can stop us from doing it การเรียนต้นเสร็จแล้วใช้ก็เป็นเช่นนั้นเหมือนกันเราสามารถทำได้ไม่มีใครมาหยุดเราให้ทำได้ So then there's another reference in, from the scripture from the Skanda Purana and the Kasha Kanda portion แล้วก็มีการยืนยันแบบนี้อีกในอีกพระเวทอีกเล่มหนึ่งก็คือการพูราณะ So it says there in the country known as m a y u r a d w a j a The lower caste people, who are considered less than sudras, are also initiated by the Vaishnava cult of devotional service. บอกว่าแต่กล่าวไว้ว่าในประเทศมายูรัตจัลล์คนชั้นต่ำที่พิจารณาว่าต่ำกว่าสุตราได้รับการอุปสมบทในวรรณกรรมในวัฒนธรรมวิชนาวะแห่งการอุทิศตนเสศสละรับใช้เช่นกัน So when they are when these people are properly dressed with tilak on their bodies and beads in their hands and on their neck they appear to be coming from Vaikuntha แล้วก็เมื่อบุคคลที่เช่นนี้เนี่ยเขาเนี่ยมีการเติมที่รักบนร่างกายแล้วก็มีประคำอยู่บนมือแล้วก็มีประคำอยู่ที่คอเนี่ยเขาเนี่ยดูเหมือนว่ามาจากวัยคุณค่ะ And they look so nice that immediately surpass the ordinary brahmanas แล้วก็ดูสวยงามมากมากจนข้ามเป็นพรามธรรมดาทั่วไป So you can see a Vaishnava becomes more than a brahmana เราสามารถเห็นในวัชนาวะเนี่ยเป็นมากกว่าบรามณะอีก So this is all this fact is also supported by Sanatana Goswami and he wrote about it in his book Hari Bhakti Vilas แล้วตรงนี้เนี่ยได้บรรยายโดย Sanatana Goswami ที่ให้การสนับสนุนไว้ในหนังสือ Hari Bhakti Vilas So the Hari Bhakti Vilas is a guide for the Vaishnava. It guides them in their behavior. Hari Bhakti Vilas เนี่ยเป็นหนังสือคู่มือของวัชนาวะซึ่งจะคอยให้ให้การว่านำนำทางกับเราคำแนะนำ So it stated there that any person who is properly initiated into the Vaishnava teachings, he becomes a Brahmana. ได้กล่าวไว้อย่างชัดเจนว่าผู้ใดที่อยู่ประสมบทอย่างถูกต้องในวัฒนธรรมวิชนาวะแล้วแน่นอนว่าเขาเป็นพรามหรือบราหมณ์ And Sanatana Goswami quotes the scriptures. He gives a very nice example. He says just like metal, known as kamsa or bell metal, is turned into gold by the mixture of mercury. เราให้ตัวอย่างของโลหะคำสะโลหะทำระฆังสามารถเปลี่ยนมาเป็นทองคำได้เมื่อนำมาผสมกับเมอร์คิวรี So in the same way, a bona fide spiritual master, under the guidance of authorities, he can turn anyone to the Vaishnava teachings. ในลักษณะเดียวกันพระอาจารย์ทิพย์ที่เชื่อถือได้ก็สาถ้าเกิดว่าได้ก็สามารถที่จะมีพลังอำนาจมากพอในที่จะเปลี่ยนให้บุคคลเนี่ยมาเป็นเวชนาวะหรือปฏิบัติตามคำสอนของหลักเวชนาวะได้ So the, the one who is a devotee he he comes to the top the the topmost position of a brahmana บุคคลที่เป็นสาวกเนี่ยคือเขามาอยู่ในระดับสูงสุดของบรามณะ And Rupa Goswami also gives a warning. However, he warns people that somebody may be properly initiated, but he should not think that just because he's initiated, 
that his business is over. So that's this is a very important point because we do see this. We get people come and they want initiation and they think once they get initiation, finished, that's it. Now I'm perfect, now I'm a great devotee, I don't have to worry, I don't have to do anything. So Rupa Goswami is telling all of us and Srila Prabhupada is telling all of us as well that initiation just means the beginning. It's not the end. It's just simply the beginning. You have a long way to go. And just because we get initiation, sometimes people think they don't have to follow any more rules and regulations. But this is not true. If you get initiation, you do. You still have to follow all the rules and regulations very carefully. And if you accept a spiritual teacher and get initiation from him, and then you don't follow the rules and regulations, then it's a great offence against the spiritual master. And one who doesn't follow this, if he gets initiation and doesn't follow, then it means he's fallen, he's a fallen soul. So we have to remember our, that we're all part and parcel of Lord Krishna. And it's our duty to give service to Krishna. And if we don't give service to Krishna, then it means we are fallen, it means we are in the material world, we are in the well of material life. So just because you get initiation, don't think you're a great devotee. Don't think because you got initiation now you're a brahmana. No, you have to become a brahmana. And you have to follow the, all the rules and regulations very carefully. And Rupa Goswami says, if you are following everything very carefully, then you won't fall down. You you will always be safe. But if somehow, if somebody does fall down, if he does go against the rules and regulations, 
then the devotee needs to, it, it doesn't mean that he has to do any atonement. Right. If somehow we fall down, we go, we do something which is against the principles of devotional service. We don't have to do any kind of prayaschit. We don't have to do atonement. We just have to take up again the principles of devotional service and not do any sin. Yeah, he doesn't have to do the prayaschit. He doesn't have to do that. He just has to begin again devotional service. And he should follow all the rules and regulations very strictly. And this will bring him back into Krishna consciousness. So this is this is a mystery in the devotional service. But this is Krishna's mercy to bring people into back into Krishna consciousness. All right, so there are three different processes by which we can come to spiritual consciousness. The three processes are called karma, jnana and bhakti. So karma, karma are to ritual, if we do rituals, these are, this is karmic activities. You do rituals, different ceremonies, worship different demigods, and you want to enjoy the results. You want to get good karma. Maybe you want to destroy past karma, or maybe you're worried about future karma, which is coming to hurt you. And then dhyana is where the devotees speculate on the different teachings of the scriptures. But bhakti, devotional service, is where we simply engage with all our senses in the service of Krishna with love and devotion. So if somebody is doing bhakti, he doesn't need to do any karma or any jnana. He can just simply do bhakti. And pure devotional service doesn't have anything to do, there's no karma and there's no jnana involved in pure bhakti. Pure, pure bhakti means 100% devotion. 
บัคปีที่บริสุทธิ์เนี่ยหมายถึงการริตงเสรับใช้หนึ่งร้อยเปอร์เซ็น So that means if we're going to do pure bhakti, that means we don't have any desire for any enjoyment in the material world. And we won't try to speculate about how to get liberation from the material world. So these statements are supported by Rupa Goswami. He gives evidence from the Srimad Bhagavatam, from the eleventh canto, twenty-first chapter, verse two. And here again, this is Lord Krishna giving the Uddhava Gita. He's instructing his devotee Uddhava. So this is part of the Uddhava Gita. So there it says there's a distinction between the qualification and the disqualification. In other words, there's a qualification for devotional service, and there's also disqualifications for people doing devotional service. So if people are actually doing devotional service, then they will never, they will never take to karmic activities, or they will never desire to enjoy the material world, or they they won't even desire liberation. Baba. They, they will just simply do devotional service according to the regulative principles given by the acharyas. So that is the best qualification. Right, the best qualification is to do devotional service, described by the acharyas. And the disqualification is if you have. Strong material desires, or you're desiring liberation. So this is supported in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the first canto, fifth chapter, verse seventeen. So there, Narada Muni is instructing Srila Vyasadeva. So Srila Vyasadeva had written many books. He'd written the Mah all the Puranas, eighteen Puranas, and he'd written the Mahabharat, but he wasn't satisfied. He wasn't satisfied because he was only talking about mundane knowledge. He wasn't talking about devotional service. So Narada Muni told Vyasadeva, he said, even if one doesn't do his occupational duty, but he just takes shelter at the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, there's no harm, there's nothing wrong on his part. 
เพื่อแม้หากบุคคลไม่ปฏิบัติตามหน้าที่อาชีพที่กำหนดไว้โดยเฉพาะแต่มาเพิ่มพระบาทรูปดอกบัวของฮารีหรือกริชนาโดยตรงทันทีจะไม่มีอะไรผิดพลาดในส่วนของเขา He gives up his duty in the material world, but he didn't give up his spiritual duty. He's serving Krishna. So because he's serving Krishna, he's very secure. His condition is, his position is very secure. And even if he gets some bad association, and he falls down while doing devotional service, or he may not finish the complete course of devotional service, and he may die, he may die suddenly. But still, there's no loss for him. But if he doesn't finish this course, he may not die suddenly. But still, there's no loss for him. Right, we didn't finish all. We didn't get. We didn't do all the devotional service we wanted to do, and suddenly we find ourselves we're dying. So not a problem. Because he's taken shelter of Krishna, so he's safe. But if somebody is just doing his duty and he's following his varna and his ashram, but he has no Krishna consciousness, then that is useless. This person, he doesn't know the real benefit of the human life. So all the conditioned souls who are engaged in activities for sense gratification, that they don't, with if they don't know. This, if they don't know that this process will not give them the real benefit, then they 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 will just stay in the material world. Birth, they'll take birth and die again and again. ธรรมนิบายคือพันธวิญญาณทั้งหมดที่ทำกิจกรรมอย่างบ้าคลั่งเพื่อสนองประสาทสัมพันธ์โดยไม่รู้ว่าวิธีนี้เนี่ยไม่สามารถช่วยเขาออกไปจากมณฑลทางวัตถุได้แล้วสิ่งที่จะเขาจะได้รับก็คือการเตือนว่าตายเกิดในโลกวัตถุนี้ซ้ำแล้วซ้ำเล่า So there's a verse to support this from the fifth canto s h r i m a d Bhagavatam. It's a verse from Lord r i s h a v d e v who is instructing his 100 sons. อันนี้นะจากภาคห้าของสมาบุกตัมเป็นตอนของ r i s h a v d e v So Lord Rishabdev, he's an incarnation of Lord Krishna. He's one of the important incarnations of Krishna. Here's what I found. And uh, Lord Rishabdev, he was instructing his 100 sons about the duties. Of the human being, particularly because his sons, you know, they were important people in the world. He was the emperor of the world, and his sons were all uh, his representatives. So he wanted them to have proper education, proper understanding. <laughs> So in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it tells how Lord Rishabdev told his sons. He said that people who are 
doing karmic activities, they're doing some activities to enjoy the results, that they, they, they get, they will take birth and death, they will suffer birth and death again and again in the material world. They will have to keep doing this until they develop some feeling, some love for Lord Vasudev. Until they develop some feelings for Vasudev, those they will have to stay in the material world. And so if somebody is just they're they're staying in the material world and they're doing their duties in Nirvana and Ashram, but they don't develop any love for the Supreme Lord Vasudev, then that person is just simply wasting his human form of life. So, this is a very important instruction from Lord Rishabhdev. We should know how to make proper use of the human body. So Lord Rishabhdev, he wanted to make sure his sons got that education. All right, so we'll stop here tonight and ask if there's any questions. Any questions? Mm. Uh, yes, Vaishnavi, Vaishnava Vani. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glory to Srila Prabhupada. Very interesting points uh, that uh, I feel like uh, this is the first time I'm hearing all this. So uh, my I have two questions. Uh, we read that if one wants liberation, uh, then they will go first to go to Vaigunda and then after that uh, if they develop uh, love, pure love for Krishna, then they will go to Krishna Loka. Um, so uh, now uh, we are uh, in ISKCON and uh, we are trying to develop love for Krishna but we don't have pure love. So what will be our destination? Well, uh, First of all, I want you to understand that people yes. in Vaikuntha can also have pure love for Krishna. Oh, okay. Don't think that if people in Vaikuntha are not pure. It's just a different love. The love of the devotees in Vaikuntha is different from the love of the devotees in Goloka. Mm. Yeah, Guru Maharaj, yes. Right? But the people in Vaikuntha, they are also very pure, very advanced devotees. It's just they have the different mood, the different rasa with Krishna. Okay, yeah. Okay. แล้วได้ข่าวเพิ่งได้ยินว่าไปไวคุณชะก่อนแล้วก็ค่อยไปบุรุกะแล้วอย่างงี้ที่เราปฏิบัติกันเนี่ยเราจะได้ไปไวค
we are we are worshiping gaurani tai radha krishna i see see some people having little krishna also uh, so uh, is this uh, i was thinking whether little uh, uh, in our parampara we should worship only radha krishna and gaurani tai and uh, is little krishna also okay guru maharaj the little krishna is not really in our line it's not in our sampradaya but some people do worship it but in a strict sense it's not really in our sampradaya in our line we worship radha and krishna and we worship gornitai mainly okay okay the little krishna if you're going to worship little krishna you should worship him as a child and you know just like if you have a child you should have to offer different milk sweets and you have to, it's a different kind of it's a different mode of worship and you see that that the actually the people who worship the krishna as the child they will make all these different arrangements for worshiping the child or take for the pleasure of the child they will cook special foods very specially for the child and they will sing different songs for the child and the different festivals will all be for the pleasure and they even get the child married at some pointบูชาเนี่ยเราบูชาแบบไหนได้บ้างอะไรกุฎหมายบอกว่าส่วนใหญ่เนี่ยในสัมปทานของเราจะให้บูชาโกรณิทายแล้วก็ราตคริชนารา
required that you have to change your position. That is the point. That you can stay in your position and still get perfection. You don't need to change your position. People may think, oh, I have to change, I have to become a sannyasi, I have to give up the... No, you don't. You can stay where in whatever position you're in and become perfect. Arjuna was a householder, he was a family man. The Pandavas were all family men. When Prabhupada was a family man, later on, at the end of life, he became a sannyasi. So, you see the Mahajans, the twelve Mahajans, I think more than half of them are family men. So it's not required that you have to give up your position in the material world, but you have to give up the idea of sense gratification. That's the main thing. And you have to hear, you have to hear about Krishna carefully and for a long time. Oh yes, Guru Maharaj, it's very clear now. Thank you so much. Yeah. วันนะไหนหรือว่าอยู่ในเอ่อสถานภาพด้านไหนก็แล้วแต่แต่ว่าสิ่งที่เราจะต้องมีเนี่ยคือการเอ่ออุทิศตนแต่สารตอกฤษ
uh, okay in uh, now also can see people using their uh, like Goswami so uh, can we can we uh, can we respect them อะไรนะให้เราทําอะไรเค้านะคะเออพี่ไม่แน่ใจว่าวันวันนะเนี่ยยังมีอยู่ไหมแล้วเหมือนกับว่าเค้าเค้าค่อนข้างที่จะขั
，来的。嗯，是的，是的，郭队，今天还有还有三四个问题呢。啊，杨小马大鸡问，嗯，顶杯咕噜麻花扎纸，有新人问。当我们培养出对身边家人的爱，就能培养出对 k r i s h a 的爱吗<笑> ？Somebody asked, "If we worship our mother and father, can we, can if we love our mother and father, will we go? Will, we, will that help us to love Krishna? Just by loving our mother and father, we can love Krishna. No, mm -hmm. no, this is not, not right. This is not true." Of course, the mother and father. We should love them, but we should love all living entities. They're all part and parcel of Krishna. So Krishna's. Present in the hearts of all living entities. Krishna is not only in the heart of your mother and father. Krishna, you, 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 觉悟到我不是这个躯体，是灵魂，是解脱吗 ？Okay, what is actually liberation? If I understand I'm not the body, is this liberation? Uh, well, we said liberation in this body. Is using the body, mind, and words in the service of Krishna. That is one type of liberation. Another kind of liberation is that we we we're free from the influence of the modes of nature. We've risen out of the three modes of nature. Of course, if you use your body, mind, and words in the service of Krishna, that is means you're you're free from the modes of nature. But in the Srimad Bhagavatam, we also hear there's a statement. That said that if you actually understand your relationship with Krishna, then that is actual liberation. So liberation can be understood in different ways. You see, the highest liberation is to understand your spiritual identity and your spiritual connection with Krishna. But we also say that anybody who is fully engaged in the service of Krishna, with no activities of mundane sense gratification, then they are a liberated soul. They say that anyone who has no desire to engage in the service of Krishna, with no activities of mundane sense gratification, then they are a liberated soul. They're free of the bodily urges. Because he 呃，而是直接托对于亏是他的莲花足也没有错。我们不是要履行自己的这个固定职责吗？嗯、uh, ，Should we just keep, do we have to keep doing our duties in the material world? Is it 
can we just give up everything and just take up devotional service? Well, Archana, yeah? Yes, yeah, you have to consider what is your qualification. If you're if you if you are inspired to don to dedicate everything to the service of Krishna, then you can give up everything, all the material responsibilities, and just take up devotional service. Of course, you may not be successful. You may have to, after some time, you may feel I've done wrong, I should go back. You, you feel so much attachment for your family, and so you go back to the material duties again. But there was no harm, there was no loss that you did. If you try, to take up devotional service, there's no loss. If you're not successful, it doesn't matter. Of course, it may make it difficult for you. Your family may not want you back. They may say, oh no, you went away and left us. We don't want to take you back again. You may find yourself homeless. Or when you come back, your family may be, they may treat you very badly, that you went away and left us. And so they make it, make it very difficult for you to come back. So <laughs> you have to be very careful. Some people go out of the home and after they go out of the home, then they regret it and they want to come back to the home, but the family members don't want them back. <laughs> so you have to be careful what you do before you decide to do these things.那一个心地了就成,管理了就成,心了没有,弄白。呃，来洗清他的罪业，然后只是按照这个规范守则继续做服务就可以了。他们如果有人利用这一条去故意违反这个规范守则，怎么办？会怎么样？ Oh. So we were saying that yeah, you can uh, come back to devotional service. You don't have to do any special atonement. You just have to take up the process of devotional service again. So people may make they may take use of this to their own advantage. They may come, they may do devotional service for some time, and then they they go away from devotional service, and then they come back again. Yes, sometimes people may do that. So it means they're not of a very high standard of devotee. <laughs> เราสาวทําบาปแล้วแต่ไม่ต้องทําพิธีถ่ายบาปแค่กลับมาปฏิบัติอย่างจริงจังก็ได้เขาอาจจะช่วยโอกาสตรงนี้แล้วก็เอา
So it's better not to go away, even though it may get difficult sometimes, but don't go away. Okay, so we will stop here tonight. We thank Archana and we thank Guru Mani translating and we thank all the devotees for listening, participation. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj Ki. And we hope all the devotees have a nice weekend. We'll see you next week. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, now it's 7 o'clock.